sufficient hit with sexual abuse allegations, the Jehovah's Witnesses have settled nine lawsuits alleging church policies protected men who abused children for many years. In settling, the church did not acknowledge wrongdoing. Now, evidence has surfaced that leaders did know about some of the men, but apparently never informed authorities. Our senior investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers, has our exclusive report tonight in depth. Frederick McLean is among the country's most wanted fugitives, accused of molesting children for almost a decade. His typical victims were, were young girls, uh, I think starting around five or six years old. Authorities say McLean, who restored race cars, was a respected leader in this congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. His role in the church was significant because we believe that his participation in the church gave him access to his victims. The Jehovah's Witnesses recently agreed to pay to settle a lawsuit that alleged the church knew or should have known McLean was a pedophile. One of nine similar cases, church headquarters settled without admitting wrongdoing. But internal church records now coming to light in those lawsuits show that the church knew for years that some prominent members were sexually abusing children and did little. Example, James Henderson. Documents show that church knew he was abusing kids as early as the 1970s and stripped him of his leadership role for a while, but apparently never alerted police. He was finally arrested in 1994 and went to prison, having molested children for two decades. Another church leader, Alvin Hurd, confessed to the church in 1981 that he'd abused three children ages 5, 9, and 11. His local congregation kicked him out and alerted church headquarters. But again, the church apparently never notified police. Heard now in prison admits he molested other children until 2003. The policies and procedures enacted by Jehovah's Witnesses protect pedophiles rather than protect the children. Barbara Anderson, a former Jehovah's Witness, is an outspoken critic of the church on this issue. She says the church prefers to keep an abuser's confession confidential, treating abuse more as a sin than as a crime. They do not report child abuse to the authorities unless it's mandated by a state for the clergy to do so. The church declined to speak on camera, but in a statement wrote that it does not condone or protect child molesters, that cases within the church are rare that members have the right to report the crime to authorities and that church elders comply with child abuse reporting laws. But not all states require clergy to report child sexual abuse. That means some abusers get caught only if victims finally come forward. Like Frederick McLean's accusers, who now want this alleged molester taken off the streets. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Washington. If you go on the internet, just say child abuse, Jehovah Witnesses, and you see a lot of information that talks about child molesting the question is the people are child molesters could they use the internet as a danger resource that they could uh, join the Jehovah Witnesses and become one of the members to later down the line they can um, molest children in the congregation and other places and they can uh, go to the elders and And later on, the, their victims will come and tell the elders that this 
elder has molested them, raped them, and of course the elders is going to protect the other elder, making the victim feel that uh, this elder, there's no way this elder can lie to the to them and you have to have two or more witnesses to prove that this illegal crime even happened wow this is a new way that a real child molester can sneak in learn what they call the truth and they could go go around later down the years after they become the member work themselves up become an elder and then they can start their secret child sexual abuse on innocent children in the congregation or anywhere else There's people that was working for Brooklyn, New York for the for the witnesses. They come across letters after letters about about uh, cases in the congregations that uh, an innocent child with his parents facing elders against another elder and And the elders don't do nothing about it. Sit right down what the incident was, send it up to uh, New York City, and it's put it put it into a file. And another victim, another child, has the same problem with the same elder. Same procedure goes over and over again. But once in a while, a child with his parents gets a lawyer, gets involved with the police, and they take this case to court. And sometimes, when they find out the the guy who raped his child, molested his child in court, most cases. The Watchtower Society is sued so much money because one person, one person molested a child. Now if this was a true religion, they would convict this person in the congregation, call the police, and have this person arrested. And guess what? It would never went to court. And this... This uh, person, the victim, would never see this large amount of money because $28 million is awarded to, to the victim. And to Jehovah Witnesses, the government bodies, that's just so just just a pocket change pocket change to them so to me they would put the person who raped and molested this child would have put him in jail prison and they would have been able to keep 28 million dollars in their own pocket but they didn't for one reason. It would make Jehovah Witnesses look bad. Because they don't want people to know the truth. But they want to say, we have the truth. This is the truth. Jehovah Witnesses is God's favorite chosen people. So why would God's chosen people would be 
child molesters. Why? So it makes you think. If it's God's chosen people, would there be any child molesters in God's chosen people? God's chosen people? This is something to think about. Talk about the members. of witnesses that have protected child molesters and cases are there's 25,000 child molesters that is in Jehovah's organization God's chosen people and these molesters is among the Jehovah Witnesses and knocking at your door. And when victims goes to the elders and plead to the elders that the members of their own church is molesting them, the elders charge shut them down, keep them from going to the police. And when a parent of the child had enough they want this molester off the streets they get a hold the police and they get a lawyer when they give it give their gut and their hurt and pain they seek justice in the court system So they can get this person out of their congregation, off the streets, because the elders is not doing their job. And the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses is shutting people down so they wouldn't go to the police. This is important information. Please stop these people before you and your child become the next victim of molesters part of the congregation or come into the congregation and secretly work themselves up to be a child molester by becoming an elder. Thank you very much and have a nice day.